Hello everybody, Stuart here from Stupid Gaming. Today I'm playing um, Helldivers 2. Now I was going to say taking a look at, but I have played a number of hours of this so far, so taking a look at probably isn't the right phrase. Um, I wanted to show you guys, most of you will probably have already seen videos on this, but obviously um, I haven't released one, so I thought I would. Now, for those of you who haven't seen it, um, this is becoming a bit of a an internet sensation at the moment. Um, it's a medium priced game, and by that I mean it's £33 I think in the UK for the standard edition, and only 50 for the full featured um, citizen edition, which includes a load of extra content. Um, so it's by no means a full price game. Now this is uh, exclusive to PlayStation for the console version um, but it is on Steam as well um, and at the last count the concurrent players on Steam was about 460,000 um, which is obviously extremely good um, so I thought I would just have a quick look at this game myself so it's a third person game um, I'm not going to say it's a cover shooter because that's not really what it is, but it's a third person action game. Um, it's actually, as I said by the intro, Helldivers 2. So the first version um, released on PlayStation 4, um, and it was actually an isometric game. So exactly the same gameplay, um, as in you have stratagems, you have... Uh, weapons armor a ship etc etc but it was in the isometric viewpoint rather than the third person that change in viewpoint has completely changed the feel of the game in fairness so it's one of the reasons that I wanted to touch on this if anyone does want me to do a comparison between Helldivers 2 and Helldivers 1 please do let me know um, and I can always do a comparison video because I do have both of them so that would be quite easy. So the idea is, if you've ever seen the film Starship Troopers, you pretty much know what you're getting into. Um, you are a citizen of a, a futuristic Earth called Super Earth, um, and it's basically a, how should I say, a very um, patriotic Earth. So if you don't do exactly what you're told when you're told to do it, then you're a traitor and basically everyone on the planet hates you kind of thing. Um, you earn your citizenship by performing uh, tasks in the military and the elite in the military are called Helldivers, hence the characters that you are playing. Now, the main draw point for this game is first off amazing gunplay so the actual shooting in this feels really really good but you also have things called stratagems and these are um, activated by a combination of inputs on the direction pad once you get it correct it will either perform its task or it will summon a beacon into your hand once you have a beacon in your hand, you can then throw that beacon and a drop pod will fall from the sky and land exactly where you aim it. Well, I say exactly. Sometimes it does bounce, but it basically uh, lands where you aim it. And they can be new support weapons. They can be turrets that you deploy. They can be airstrikes, etc., etc. Now the ones where you don't have a beacon are usually mission dependent, so you might have um, hacking of a drop pod's information. So all you do is input the sequence and it will start the hack process so you don't have a beacon to throw down, but the majority of them will actually have a beacon. Now one of the interesting things about Helldivers is it has a lot of things to do in the map. It's not just a case of going around shooting bugs, although that is good fun, um, or robots, because that's the second enemy type currently within the game. Uh, they do intend to add more, so do not worry. But there are a lot of other things to do, so you might find uh, interesting positions on the map. Um, while you're running round, uh, which will give you extra super credits, which are basically your your currency. They might give you extra requisitions, which you'll use to buy um, 
new items on the sh on the ship for instance or stratagems so you request stratagems etc etc you might even find vaults that you have to blow open with explosives uh, and inside there might be better equipment or something that you can use on that particular mission and that's the main thing it will only work on that particular mission it won't stick around from then on you can unlock them later on of course and then you can equip them into your loadout but if you find it during a mission, it will stay during that mission. Now, as I said, the first enemy you're going to encounter will most likely be the Terminid. Now, don't mistake that for Tyranid. It is a very different creature. It might look exactly the same. It might sound very, very similar. But trust me, it's ex it's completely different. Um, I say that tongue-in-cheek, of course. So. Those of you who know my channel know that I am a big Warhammer fan and uh, one thing about this is it is extremely similar to the Warhammer universe. Basically, Starship Troopers, Warhammer and Helldivers are all very similar universes. They all have very similar um, ideas, etc. Now, Warhammer is obviously a lot more expanded on these days, even though Warhammer came after Starship Troopers. Starship Troopers, the books, were written before Warhammer. But Warhammer has a, a much bigger following and as such has a much larger and deeper lore behind it. Now the thing is that one of the, the lore points of Warhammer is that the Space Marines are dropped onto a planet to attack the planet with drop pods. Now, the interesting thing about Helldivers is you get dropped onto the planet by a Hell Pod, which basically is exactly the same thing. The Terminids are almost identical to a lot of the Tyranid creatures, but you could say that they're exactly the same as the bugs out of Starship Troopers as well. And then you find the Automatons. You won't see any shown in this video clip uh, that's going on on screen but I will tell you that they have enemies that look like sentinels which are two-legged walker robots a bit like Atats from Star Wars uh, not Atats, ATSTs, the walkers um, but they're also in Warhammer you have things that look like dreadnoughts as in the Contemptor dreadnoughts and you have things that look like Terminators and I don't mean, well, actually I do mean the Terminator with Arnie, but I also mean Terminators from Warhammer. So there are a lot of um, cross law and cross, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Universe imagery going on, I suppose is the best thing to say. So we've said about the gunplay, gunplay feels absolutely amazing. The stratagems, as I said, are entered with different directional inputs on the d-pad so as soon as you press l1 to bring up your stratagem list you can then input the stratagem and it will allow you to do things such as this reinforce so once you die you have to have one of the other members of your team reinforce you if all of you die and you've still got some reinforce points left it will basically revive all of you but it will revive you all in a different location i believe um i've only had that happen once and i can't quite remember where it revived us but it does ba basically say squad wiped out and major reinforcements so they basically send another three people down although it is still you and your team Stratagems are really, really good. They feel good, especially when you get the button inputs correct. Um, they can add a an undue sense of anticipation and anxiety to the to the actual structure of the game because if you get the input wrong and it cancels it, you have to start again. So if you're trying to do something that's going to save your life for instance such as call in a turret or something similar and you're being chased by hundreds of these uh, terminids then what you don't want to do is get halfway through and fail um, and then get leapt on and it really just messes with your day it's happened to me a number of occasions because i get flustered um, it's one of the reasons i don't play horror games because i do kind of just lose it when I get into a situation where anxiety peaks 
So, yeah, I, I think it does add a whole new layer to the game that you don't get with normal shooters. Um, you know, in a, a normal cover shooter, you kind of see an enemy, you run up to a wall, you get behind cover, you throw a grenade and shoot it lots of times and all is over. With this, your stratagems will make the difference between a completed mission and a failed mission. Especially when you get big bugs like this, where most of the things that you're going to shoot at them will have no effect whatsoever, or minimal effect. Reloading. Now, I can't really talk about this game without going into the graphics and also the, the sound and everything else, which I would normally do during a first look at a game. Um, graphically, I think it looks really nice. Um, you could say it's a little on the bland side, but at the same time, a lot of people said that about Resistance Fall of Man, and I thought that was an amazing game. The problem is that people are expecting saturated colours in certain respects, but then when you actually get the saturated colours, they look completely unrealistic. Now, although this is an alien world, so purple trees, etc. don't really exist on Earth, you could say that it's still relatively realistic for the setting. You are, of course, in the middle of a war zone, and when a lot of smoke and flames go into the sky, it tends to make everything a bit grey and hazy, which is exactly what's going on. We also have a lot of fire in the background from mountains, and... We have these bug nests, which again have like flame coming out of them. So the amount of smoke, fire and everything going into the sky, it's no doubt it's grey and misty. I still think that the lighting effects and everything look really, really nice though. You can see that the, the bloom from all of your napalm or your fire. And occasionally when you get low, you can see the sunlight kind of reflecting off little stones and textures on the floor as well. So it does look really nice. Now from a sound perspective, I'm going to do this in two parts. We have the sound effects, which I think are absolutely brilliant. And then we have the voices. Now the voices are a lot more difficult to categorise. I would say that they sound absolutely brilliant. That doesn't mean they're not annoying as hell. So when you actually equip a machine gun and you hold your trigger open for a long time, your character will start to scream and laugh maniacally as though they're an absolute nutcase and just start just going absolutely wild and after a while i get that it's trying to be that flamboyant you know we are the saviors of the world and all of this kind of thing but it does get a little grating after they start talking rubbish every single time they use something i mean the number of times now that i have ended up shooting you know seven or eight uh, terminids in a row and your character's just like uh, dispensing uh, democracy or something like that and you think okay but it's saying it in a very over the top manner it's not like yes we're dispensing democracy it's like yeah we're dispensing democracy and it, it I don't know it just comes across as being too forced I know it's supposed to be satire and I know it's supposed to be the way they've intended it but for me, it's just a little bit overboard. Uh, a friend of mine has actually turned off the sounds, the, the voice sounds, uh, and I am really considering doing the same. That's not to say it detracts from an extremely good game. Now, I want to uh, cover some of the... I'm going to say issues, not issues, some of the controversy over this game. So, when it first released, they had hellish server issues. Now we have to consider, when Helldivers 1 came out, their peak player numbers were 6,000 at a time. They set the servers up for 60,000 for Helldivers 2. On day 1 they had 80,000. So no one could get in. It crashed the servers. They put a fix in place. Um, and then within another couple of days they went from that 60 that 80,000 to over 300,000. In fact, I think it was over 400,000 which it is pretty much now 460 or 480,000. 
So the number of players that they have been experiencing are so far in advance of what they were estimating that they just hadn't catered for it as far as their servers. Now what that led to is it led to a lot of review bombing on Steam. Um, and because of that, a lot of, how should I say, and I hate to use the term, but it's true, a lot of fanboys of different consoles and, and different genres were pointing out that it's another complete failure for the Sony console. Now although I do most of my videos on the Sony console, it's not because it's my only console, it's just the easiest for me to record on. I do not have a capture device and I do not have any method of recording video on the Xbox or the PC in a suitable manner. I don't have any editing software or anything. All of my videos are done through the PlayStation and Share Factory. So if I had a capture card and if I had some expensive editing software, I would be making content for all platforms. I like all platforms. I have games that I play on each one of them. Sony just so happens to be the easiest for me to record videos and gameplay on. So that's why you only see videos on PlayStation for me. I originally did do the PlayStation simply because it was my only console at the time. But I have bought Xbox and I have got a PC. Um, but I still only do PlayStation videos and content. I do play all three though. And because of that, I see the benefits and the negatives for every single one of those systems and there are negatives and benefits for all of them currently xbox is lacking games severely lacking games and the ones that they're coming out with are not meeting the hype not as far as i'm concerned anyway starfield i do not think has a patch on this game they're both set in space they're both kind of very different genres but if you want to have a space game, then this, for me, is a much better space game. If you want a space role-playing game, then I think Outer Worlds is better than Starfield, personally. Um, and that's made by another Microsoft developer. But at the same time, I do have Halo, I do have Gears of War 5, I do have the Forza games, I do have Starfield, and I've played a fair bit of it. Um, so... I do use those consoles. The review bombs for this game are completely unjustified. There is no reason this game should have been review bombed just because of server issues. I get people were unhappy, but what they should have done is just held off, and if in two, three weeks the servers are still rubbish, then yeah, fine, review bomb it. If it's on day one, then I think it's a bit harsh. If it then gets fixed, go in and change your review, fine. but. I don't know any games these days that release that do not have some form of server problem if it's a live service game. And this is, don't doubt it, a live service game. So what else can we talk about? Um, I could show you the, the different things on the ship, but basically it's quite dull. What you have is you have a console to upgrade your ship which will allow you to improve certain things such as um, more ammo etc um, better orbital attacks etc etc um, and it changes the look of your ship as well the main one that you're going to interface with is going to be the stratagems so you can purchase stratagems using requisitions and you also have your armory terminal where you can basically change your loadout, um, your starting loadout. You can do that before every mission as well, but it just means that it'll save a bit of time that you set your preferred loadout. Once you've actually done that, there's not really that much on the bridge. The only other thing is the uh, mission center, which looks like a giant globe. You select which area of the globe you want to go to. It zooms in, you select your mission, you select where you want to spawn in that mission um, and then you're ready to go. So that's basically it. Now you do have some funky things. I did talk about side missions, um, but this was the main mission was to launch an ICBM. 
Um, don't ask me why you're launching a ballistic nuclear missile at a load of bugs, but you have. And uh, yeah, it's a little bit of spectacle in uh, in the game as well. So there we go. I, I don't really have much else to say other than if you like your third person shooters um, with a little bit of a uh, unique selling point, so to speak, then this definitely fits the bill. Um, it's hard, do not mistake that. It's not as hard as Helldivers 1, but it is still a hard game. You have a lot of things to take notice of. You have stamina, you have... Um, when you dive for cover, for instance, you don't automatically roll and get back up. You literally dive and lie on the floor until you manually stand yourself up. So a lot of things that you do to save yourself can have a negative effect of causing you more grief as well. So you really do have to plan how you approach each of the different missions and each of the different situations you'll find yourself in. I personally really like it. I didn't when I first started playing it, I have to admit. I thought it was a little bit... Um, I don't think it met the hype again. But I think it didn't meet the hype of other players rather than the developer. I don't think the developer did anything wrong with this game. It, they advertised it exactly as it is. I think a lot of people that I know loved the first one so much that they really did sell the second one as going to be the, the you know the second coming of the Messiah. And it's not. It is a game and it does have its flaws, it does have its nuances. But at the same time, if you're with a group of friends or even a couple of randoms like I am in this game, it can be immensely fun. And let's face it, that's why we all play games. But there we go. That's that's it. I uh, I don't really have much else to say other than you know for the price point I would definitely consider it if you do like your shooters. Um, it's definitely got some unique points, and um, yeah, you can expect if you would like to see that video of Helldivers One versus Helldivers Two, you can expect to see that in the future. So let me know in the comments if you do want to see it. If you've enjoyed this video, found it useful or informative, please make sure you do click the like button. Subscribe if you haven't already, because, uh, you know, I do want to get more subscribers. Join me on Patreon. Um, do a search for Stupid Gaming. I can't, unfortunately, put links into anything simply because I'm not monetized on YouTube and they don't allow me to put links into my videos <laughs> annoyingly so so we because I can't make money through YouTube they won't let me make money any other way unless I just ask you to search for me so it would be great if you would because that will help me out for the future and I do look forward to seeing you for my next video which hopefully will be out very very soon Thanks very much for watching guys, you will take care, bye for now.